God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and then function in weakness. Yeah. All, right. All salvation is not equal. Yeah. 
my God. So are there some more saved than others? Mm. Or should we pose the question, are there some that are more mature than mm. others? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because if you go to the learning curve of salvation, there are Christians that find themselves at all different points along that learning curve where some have developed and grown more because of their yieldedness and their desire to grow. And there's some that have stopped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And are still immature. Mm -hmm. And still don't want to deal with certain things in their lives. Mm -hmm. And as a result of it, their salvation process is not as mature mm -hmm. as it should be. Right. The kingdom of God is about manifesting God on the earth. Okay. And as best as I can, true to myself and my wife is here and she will quickly remind me if I'm wrong. <laughs> quickly. Very quickly. It's great. The longer you get married that your wife can correct you. <laughs> because without this girl I wouldn't be anywhere. I'm in serious trouble. <laughs> but this morning let's talk about developing kingdom infrastructure. Ten practical steps to developing infrastructure. This is for a home, a marriage, a business, a ministry. And it has been said, you don't grow a strong church, a strong church grows you. Mm -hmm. right. So when your church is strong, your church pushes you to grow. Mm -hmm. Because they, they're not going to accept a waffle on a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 They're going to want some serious substance word that's coming forward. Oh. And the strength of that church, the pull of that church for the word, will drive you to your knees to pray, will yes, drive you to fast, will drive you to study, and drive you to operate in excellence. Amen. So a strong church doesn't grow you. Uh, sorry, you don't grow a strong church. A strong church builds you. Right. Now, in growing a church, because I, I, I understand we have today senior pastors with their leaders here, and this is a, uh, an area of passion of mine because of the things that my, my wife and I do with regards to helping churches grow infrastructure is developing your church holistically. That is mentally, psychologically, culturally, financially, spiritually, emotionally. And there's never been more pressure on this than as we are right now. There's a pressure on the pool. We go to church on Sunday morning and we are, we are more than just financial advisors. We are more than just preachers. We are fathers. We are counselors. We are operating on so many different levels and there's so much of a, of, a, of a push for us. And it's very important that we, we look at growing people's lives closely. Now in building your church, manifest the kingdom of God. When we use the word manifest, let's clarify our terms. It's to demonstrate the kingdom of God so people can see it. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Number one, the first thing that we must have, and it's what Pastor Gerald was saying so eloquently when we came in with his purpose. Number one, First step to manifest the kingdom of God is you must have purpose. You must know what your purpose is. The purpose of this microphone is not to stir a pot of gravy. If I put this microphone in a pot of gravy, they would think I've lost my mind. Because the purpose of this microphone is not a, is not a spoon. The designated purpose of this instrument is, is to project and amplify sound, not to stir stew. As Pastor Gerald adequately said, when the when the purpose of the thing is never understood, abuse is inevitable. How do we understand purpose in our lives as Christians? Most people say to me, my purpose is to worship God. That's not true. Because most Christians believe their purpose is 30 minutes or 15 minutes, which is designated on a Sunday morning to give God praise. So if your, if your purpose is to praise God, when the praise ends, all is no longer praying. The purpose is, is not God. Yes. That's, That's, That's not your purpose. Saying your, your purpose is praise and worship is like saying to a dog, you're a dog. The dog says, what I know is woof woof. I'm thinking woof 
right. Your gift makes you unique. And when we look at the scriptures, the gifts are given to us in Romans 9, 1 Corinthians 12, and Ephesians chapter 4. Because when you discover what your gift is, then your gift is directly related to the person who gave the gift. That is God himself. So purpose is extremely important. Moving on. Number two, the second thing that helps us develop uh, purpose. Uh, as we move on from purpose, the second thing is vision. We must have vision. Mm. Because once a person knows what their purpose is, they are really comfortable with who they are. Mm -hmm. right. Christians that understand their purpose don't get offended and leave church because the message preaches is too hard. And in a democratic society, and I, I shared this with the pastors when we gathered together, the biggest problem that's pushing me back in this message this morning is democracy. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot want to manifest the kingdom of God and do it democratically. Oh my God. Because democracy is the basis and as man has the, as is on the throne of, of democracy. Yes. But in the kingdom of God, man comes onto the throne after he's let someone else on the throne first. Uh -huh. And God lives on the throne in the kingdom of God. Yes, yeah. And within the confines of the kingdom of God, you don't do what you want to do, say what you want to say, oh do what you want to do, you do your own thing. But you can't do that. Not in the confines of the kingdom of God. Yes. Because within the confines of the kingdom of God, God is in control. Yes, yes. And what God says goes. Yes. God's laws, God's principles yes. are those things that operate. Yes. Are we in democracy? <laughs> you try and tell people in, in, in America what to do. They tell you how high you can go jump. <laughs> <laughs> so establishing a, a kingdom culture that is an affront to a national culture is a tremendous challenge. So it goes back to how do we flesh out our daily lives. Mm -hmm. As best as I can share with you, the module that I bring to you, we operate in our house every day. If you build a kingdom house, there are four major foundations that build a kingdom house. The first one is order. Mm -hmm. There must be order in your house. Mm -hmm. In my house, there's order. All right. When I get home, I can appear to be humble and quiet. When I get home, even the roaches move next door. <laughs> Yes, to walk up to the front. Where am I? 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 Where am